could see everybody here this morning. I uh, got a very unusual title today, unusual for me, The Joy of Christmas. And there are certain things that people like about Christmas. And we're going to talk about that in just a moment. And then we're going to talk about some of the other things that we need to discuss. Let's ask God's blessing. Father, we thank you for each one who's here who's watching by the internet. We ask your blessing and anointing on the service. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, the title is The Joy of Christmas. For those of you who saw the email, you're not too surprised. Uh, at this time of the year, you have good food, and you have pretty bright lights, and uh, you have, it, and, and it helps to get through the dead of winter. It does. It helps to get through the dead of winter, because at this time of the year, the days are shorter. It's cold. It's dreary. Sometimes it's rainy, and when you got bright lights up, it just sort of adds a little something. It compensates for the dreary, depressing, cold weather. And the ancients, in ancient times, they, would, they came up with a celebration called the Saturnalia, the last week of December, to compensate for all the dreary, cold, wintry days, when the days are still, right now, getting shorter. And they will continue to get shorter to the last week of December. The last week of December, the days start getting longer, and that's when they said, hey, the sun is reborn, and they called it the birthday of the sun. Now, in the old, ancient Roman calendar, the winter solstice was apparently on the 25th of December. Now it's on like the 30, uh, 23rd, I think. And so they came up with a day, that, and not just one day, but a whole you know, week-long celebration, the week of Saturnia, and, uh, so that they'd have something to do, give them something, something to celebrate. So they celebrated the birth of the sun god, which is the pagan god. Now, the sun god is called Baal in, uh, among the Phoenicians and Tammuz among the Babylonians, etc., etc. But the birthday that all the sun gods had in common, though they had different names, was the 25th of December. And so this is the reason, one of the reasons they did that. And so to this day, even Americans have want to do something at this time of the year because it's dreary and it's cold. And, and so Christmas gives a little bit of light to this time of the year. And let's talk about what is called the joys of Christmas. For example, the, I already mentioned the bright lights. Also, uh, good music this time of the year. You actually do hear, uh, finally, some good music. Uh, songs like Jingle Bells, nothing wrong with that, good winter song. Winter Wonderland, I think is what it's called. Is that the name of it? And then, of course, there's always hot chocolate in the fireplace. Uh, one of the songs says, roasting chestnuts on an open fire, you know. I don't think they even have chestnuts anymore. I, hear, I heard they're gone. I thought all the, I think all the trees died. All the trees died, yeah. Uh, there's a lovely golden glow from the fireplace, and you're being with somebody you love, and so that's all good. It's all good for the long and cold winter nights. What's wrong with that? I have an Amish fireplace at home, and I can turn that thing on a cold winter day, drink some hot chocolate, and I'm happy. Good family reunions this time of year. People get together with family. And there are even romantic movies on the Hallmark Channel. Now, what could be wrong with any of that? Well, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. It does help you get through the, the, the uh, cold, lonely nights. But here's my question. What do all these things, or what do any of these things have to do with Jesus? Nothing. It's just a way to get through the winter, and we bring his name into it to legitimize an ancient custom. Now... In addition to what people call the joys of Christmas, I want to read to you a few other things that we want to talk about, which I have not really, I've never really approached it from this viewpoint before. Uh, th this I got off the internet just uh, two days ago. Some problems, that, that this article here mentions eight problems. And this is from secular people, not religious people. Number one, the season starts too early. That's one of the problems with Christmas. We blame the shops for one of the biggest problems about Christmas. Every year they start to fill the shelves with Christmas items earlier and earlier. Soon the stores will be promoting Christmas for the following year. How can you see it as special when it's in your face for months beforehand, even in the summer? Number two, the cost. A major problem with Christmas is the cost. Too many uh, people spend beyond their budget. I met a man some years ago. He bought Christmas presents on his credit card and was still paying on it in March. Ridiculous. And this article here says it's ridiculous for just one day. Third problem, organizing Christmas can be a logistical nightmare. Your sister tells you she has to find out what her in-laws are doing before she can in accept your invitation. Both sets of parents think you should go to be with them. So it causes problems there and stress. Um, it becomes very complicated, not to mention stressful. And that's just working out where you'll be and with whom, never mind the cooking or the shopping. Number four, 
It's not unusual to find yourself spending Christmas with, with family or relatives that you don't actually like. <laughs> you gotta, they expect you to be with them. Number five, family fights. Given that Christmas can be a particularly stressful time, tensions can arise even among the closest of families. It's also a time when old grudges can surface, spending the day or worse, spending several days in, in a family equivalent of a war zone is one of the worst problems of Christmas. So we have to look at both sides. Now, when you go to church, most churches, they say, oh, but it's Jesus' birthday. I just did a radio program one or two yesterday. Stop lying to your kids. It's not Jesus' birthday. And for the pastors who are watching, stop lying to your congregations. You know better than that. It's not Jesus' birthday. All scholars agree he was born in the autumn or maybe even late summer, but certainly not the day of the winter. Number six, it's hard to see... Christmas has something special when the shops are pushing you to spend months ahead of December 25th and when so many people judge it by the amount or the value of the gifts they buy or receive. Number seven, travel. That's more expensive at peak times. You try to take an airplane now and the, the, uh, the rates are going to be up. So if you have to fly to visit family, it can cost you a lot of money. If you drive instead, you face spending time in traffic jams. And then finally, number eight, you can't please everyone at this time of the year. Another problem you get this time of the year, you get colds <coughs> sometimes and sore throats. One problem with Christmas that many of us have is trying to achieve the impossible, keeping everybody happy. Parents have their own ideas about what you should do, even though you're an adult with your own family. People have their own rigid ideas about how the day should be spent, when to eat, open the gifts, and the whole thing becomes a nightmare. Now, this is from a secular source. I don't even have the uh, who even wrote this. It comes from England, though, apparently. So I thought I'd share that with you. Do you have any copy for that? I'll tell you what I, well, I got off the internet, I could send it to you. Okay. Or, or actually, we could make some copies back yeah. there. It, it would take about eight pages, seven pages to do that. Yeah, uh, seven. Yeah, it's seven pages. You want me to go ahead and start it? I can go put it in the feeder and it can... Okay, if you want to. Now, another problem uh, is uh, here's some statistics. Christmas is celebrated in the United States on the 25th of December. It's a civil holiday and is celebrated by an increasing number of non-Christians. The largest It's the largest economic stimulus for many nations around the world. The Christmas shopping season can start as early as September, which is right in the summertime. And some consumers begin even earlier. The Christmas, now this is interesting. This is from a secular source. I don't know who wrote it. Uh, well, it comes from the Statista Research Department. The Christmas tree is considered to be the main symbol of this pagan tradition. <laughs> I looked at that, I laughed. I mean, even the statistic organization calls it a pagan tradition. And it's an integral part of the shopping season. About 26 million real Christmas trees were purchased uh, on, uh, in the United States, and on average, it cost over $50 per tree. $50 for a tree that you take out of the forest where it belongs, put it in your house, leave it there for three or four days, and then it dies, you gotta throw it out beside the road. 29% of the respondents in a 2016 survey stated that they expect to spend over 500 United States dollars on gifts, $500. So that's pretty bad. Now even, sorry about my cold, even those who are usually content to experience, uh, who are usually content don't have any depression, even they experience depression and loneliness and a lack of fulfillment. Here's the thing. People expect Christmas to be something exciting. You hear all the songs and the you know, sleigh bells ringing, whatever it is, and they make you think it's supposed to be a time of happiness and joy, and you think, I'm not experiencing that. And if you're looking to a holiday to get your peace and your joy, it's just not going to happen, as so many people have found out. Subtitle this is Why Depression is So Common During the Holidays. One, number one, social isolation. Uh, people are isolated, that causes depression. People who have feelings of disconnectedness often avoid social interactions at holiday time. Unfortunately, withdrawing often makes the feelings of loneliness and symptoms of depression even worse. These individuals may see other people spending time with friends and family and ask themselves, why can't that be me? And so here's a time when we're supposed to be joyful and happy, according to the songs and according to the traditions, and yet so many people are lonely and depressed, and it's the season, it's the holiday that's creating these things. 
Why should we keep celebrating it when every 12 months we artificially create a time not of joy, but a time of depression? Some people may be keenly aware of the loss of a loved one during the holiday season. Here are several ways to stave off the holiday blues that may descend at this time. I didn't write about all that. But, you know, if somebody has died, and then they say, oh, this is, that was our last Christmas together. And if you, don't, if you don't even celebrate Christmas, which I gave it up in the 1960s, if you don't celebrate Christmas, if somebody dies in October or November, it's, no, it's, you know, it's not a big thing because you're not celebrating it anyway. And if you keep God's holy days, you don't think about it. <clears throat> Going for a walk in the park or the woods helps many people relax and feel better when they are feeling overwhelmed with Christmas. Um, why should we even mess with it? Now, here's, here's something from a PhD, Dr. Michael Rubino. And he says the holidays, he says the holidays and depression, many people assume they go together. In fact, I didn't read this one part here where they actually, I know what it was now. Let me see if I can find it here. Now, listen to this. This is from the... Uh, from Psychology Today magazine. This is interesting. Um, excuse me. <laughs> Big problem this time of the year, you get cold. Now, I don't even go out shopping at this time of the year. But anyway, people start buying their gifts now at this time of the year. But according to Psychology Today magazine, up to 45% of North Americans, this was in a survey, they were willing to admit it, 45% of, of North Americans dread the holiday season. The national, now that's the ones who admitted it. Most Christians, if you were to ask them in a survey, do you dread the holidays? Oh, no. Why, that would be blasphemy to say that because it's Jesus' birthday. But if they were to tell you the truth, they'd say, yeah. When my mother was putting up the Christmas tree one year, I remember, I was a little kid and I was all excited about it. Somebody came to the house, I forget who it was, and said, are you looking forward to Christmas? She said, my mother said, I'm looking forward to December 26th. <laughs> you blame them? Can't blame them. I'm looking forward to the 26th. When she, and, and right after Christmas, man, she took that tree down and got rid of it all. Um, and she celebrated. But 45% of North Americans admit that they dread it. The National Institutes of Health, the NIH, as they called it in Washington, says that Christmas is associated with a spike in suicides, as well as an increase in the number of the cases of depression. Yep. Why do we keep doing it? Why do we keep doing it? Um, now, but this doctor, this psychologist, psychotherapist, he said they have been working on this, and the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, now say that the rates are dropping during the holiday season. They may, this may be because during this time of the year, we pay more attention to depression and suicide. Here's a holiday that causes so many suicides that the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, is going out of their way to really try to compensate and try to help people for this horrible holiday, which we all say is joy and, you know, laughter and all, isn't it wonderful? I told you about the joys of Christmas a few moments ago. Yeah, you get together with family and friends and you get to have good food and music and so on. And go in debt. Yeah. And most people do that. And people are going in debt at this time of the year. It's a, it's a, it, but you know, it's amazing. Why would a, a holiday that is genuinely Christian cause so much depression and suicide that the Center for Disease Control has to go out of their way at this time of the year to try to help people because there's so much depression? You know, it sounds to me like Christmas is a pretty bad idea, and it has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. Can you tell me what verse in the Bible Christmas is in? Yeah, Christmas, the holiday, is never mentioned in the Bible. Never. And even Thanksgiving is getting to be that way in some cases. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, if Christmas ain't in the Bible, and we're supposed to be following this word of God, uh -oh. why are people celebrating? Uh-oh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -oh. It's not the word of God. <laughs> That's true. But it's an ancient pagan Roman tradition, and the Catholic Church said, hey, it's such a great tradition. Let's bring it into the Catholic Church. And the Protestants just swallowed it. Yes, ma'am. Well, a lot of times, when, as I've heard people say, are you the Christmas spirit? Are the Christmas spirit? Yeah, but what spirit is it? What spirit is attached yeah. to that pagan right. holiday? What, yeah. what spirit? Yeah, the Christmas spirit. What spirit is it that people are, are getting attached to? It makes you wonder. 
the uh, in the Bible, the number one competitor to the true God, Jehovah, God, the number one competitor, Jehovah Yahweh, the Eternal is what his name means in Hebrew, was Baal. If you go back and read Kings and Chronicles, it was always they turned to Baal worship. Baal was the sun god, and his birthday was the winter solstice, the last week of December. Even before the Roman calendar was invented um, by Julius Caesar, ostensibly, even before then, they still knew when the winter solstice was, and they still had this celebration that goes back probably all the way back to Babylon. But it doesn't have anything to do with Jesus. So what is that Christmas spirit? Is it the spirit of the Baal? It could be. Well, the Bible says you're not supposed to attach gold yeah. and silver and stuff like that to no tree and set yeah. them in your house. Jeremiah 10 does talk about that how the heathen, first of all, God says, don't learn the way of the heathen. For the heathen right. go out the forest and they cut down a tree and they bring it in. They deck it with the gold and the silver. They decorate the thing. But we're not. Do we need to worship the tree? That's what they say. We're not worshiping the tree. We're worshiping Christ. But, for, but the Bible says don't take their customs and use them to worship God. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy 12, verses 30 through 32. Now, Here. The Bible rejects it, and they accept it. You know? Yeah, yeah. And this is why we, we want to take a look at this. I gave it up. I have never missed Christmas. And while everybody's out here going to Kmart, Walmart, and fighting over the Kmart specials and all this type of stuff, and, and Black Friday, I stayed in the house on Black Friday. If you go out to the stores, it was a pretty crowded, pretty crowded probably. It's still but, going on today. That's what? It's still going on today. I'll bet it is. Everybody's out shopping today. But, you know, not only do I save money, but I avoid the crowds, the stress, and all that. What do you get so-and-so? What do you get them? I'm, I'm a terrible gift giver anyway. So I can I can give gifts through the year, but not for, for, for a, this holiday. It says here, if you're a military family, a loved one may be stationed overseas and won't be home for Christmas. Remember the song, that sad song that Bing Crosby sang? It came out in the 40s. I'll be home for Christmas. Do you know that for a while they wouldn't even let that be played on, on stations, on radio stations, because it made the people here back home sad because their loved ones were overseas fighting in World War II. Do you have a question? Pastor, you know, I, I gave away all my gifts uh, on Thursday. <laughs> it says thanks <clears throat> Yeah, give thanks and on that's Thursday. that's what I celebrate, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's certainly fine to celebrate Thanksgiving. It's a day of giving thanks to God. That's right. <clears throat> and you, if you're thankful that the Lord let you see that day, then, you know, he... He said, you ought to take care of somebody and do something for yeah. you. Yeah. Know? You may not feel be feeling like celebrating, or you may have to change holiday traditions, which can make some feel very sad and lonely. So you're going to have to change them a little bit so that you don't miss your loved ones who have died. Another common difficulty of this time of the year is money. Many people feel like they need to spend a great deal of money to show love. They may just be able to pay their monthly bill, may not just be able to pay their monthly bills and cannot afford holiday gifts. Why do we need to spend money to show that we care, he says. What if you just write them a letter and tell them how much you appreciate them? Um, we've had people numerous years to drop out of college because when it comes up to this season of the year and they get behind on paying their tuition and they'd rather drop out of college and, and stop learning about Jesus Christ so they can ostensibly celebrate his birthday. And so they don't have money to pay their tuition. We had one guy that came twice one time. And they, they want to they wanna spend their money on something that the Bible condemns, by the way, and then they drop out of college. They're, they're supposedly honoring Christ, and yet they're here to learn about Christ, but they'd rather spend money than do that. Yes, on gifts. What's the question there? Thanksgiving is not in the Bible, but you still observe it as being holy. No, we don't. <laughs> Thanksgiving is not, is not holy. It was set, set aside by Abraham Lincoln, as a, it, it very much like Mordecai set aside Purim to give thanks to God. It was two days of celebration. We have Thursday and Friday, uh, officially Thursday, but many people take Thursday and Friday as a time to give thanks to God for our blessings. And so it, it is very biblical in, in principle with Purim. America is like, a Thanksgiving to Americans is like Purim was to the Jews. Yes, sir. I had seven dinners delivered to me yesterday. Well, that's good. And by the way, take advantage of food and 
I'm not saying don't go to family reunions. I'm not saying accept food. I'm not saying if somebody says, hey, we've got a big big dinner, you know, come over here and, and celebrate with us and have fun. Well, don't celebrate. Don't, first of all, let me say this. As a minister, leave Christ out of Christmas. Don't put him in a, a pagan celebration that he never belonged in. But if they want you to come over and celebrate family and friends and eat, yeah, by all means. I'm not suggesting you don't get together with family. Sometimes the only time family gets together is either Thanksgiving or Christmas or whatever. He said, as a psychotherapist, I have seen, uh, this, is guy's, this guy's a PhD, I've seen the people dealing with mental illness feel lonely and out of place during this time of year. So Christmas puts a stress on people, especially if they have mental problems. Also remember the holidays can be a lonely time for people. So if you see someone who looks like they're having a hard time or know someone is struggling during the season, try to help. What a shame that this season causes so many problems. Dr. Rubino specializes in treating depression and suicide. So he wrote about Christmas. Any questions so far? Got a little bit more to share with you. Yes, sir. Well, you know, Pastor, Thanksgiving is, don't have no biblical person's name attached to it. Yeah, like Christmas, it's know. an American holiday. Yeah, I mean, they just celebrate because they're thankful, you know? Yeah, and I mean, we've had a prayer day in May, National Prayer Day at the White House. Uh, is that, well, they, they supposedly celebrate it at the White House, but it's supposed to be celebrated by all Americans. We can take a day in May, take time July, to give God thanks. The 4th of July also. Yeah, 4th of July. The way I celebrate the 4th of July, I don't use fireworks. I don't want to blow my fingers off. I only got 10. So the way I celebrate July 4th is by going to my knees in my prayer closet and thanking God for our liberties and our freedoms that I have to preach his word. That's right. And now, another holiday that they consider is, is Christian is Easter, man. Jesus ain't yeah. got nothing to do with that. I agree. Easter goes back 2,000 years before the birth of Jesus. The name you know, Easter. All the, all the Christian holidays that they say they're celebrating don't have nothing to do with Christianity doesn't have a thing to do with biblical Christianity. It has a lot to do with apostate churchianity, but not biblical Christianity. Now, here's another article here I got off the internet. Uh, there is nothing wrong with you when you feel depressed during the holidays. <laughs> Would God give us holidays that automatically makes people feel depressed? That's a spirit. It's a spirit. Yeah, a spirit of depression is connected with Christmas. All that celebration, joy, and goodwill can actually get a little much, <laughs> says this article. None of these are from churches. This is just psychologists and people like that, secular people who wrote these articles. You might believe that you're out of step with the rest of the world, but statistics, say the word, statistics say that over 40% of the population just feels exhausted and inadequate. Look around the room at your fellow holiday goers. Many of them are just as unhappy as you are. <laughs> uh, holiday depression symptoms. Depression is often associated with mental and emotional symptoms. If you've been diagnosed with clinical depression, the holidays just make your symptoms worse. Why would God give us a holiday that makes people with mental problems, makes them worse? That doesn't sound like Jesus, but it sounds like Satan. Am I saying that Christmas is from Satan? It sure ain't from the Bible. It, is, it has nothing to do with Christ. In fact, the very name Christ's Mass was a Catholic invention to have a Mass for Christ on that day. A mass, a sacrifice. That's what the word mass means. Uh, surveys also prove that those who are not clinically depressed but still feel that the holidays are the worst time of the year, it says. Uh, perhaps this is where the Grinch came from. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, it's the worst time of the year for people. Endless parties and gatherings, the expense of shopping. Make a conscious effort to reduce stress and find a bit of holiday joy. He says, don't stress by dreaming of what the holidays are supposed to be. Well, it's supposed to be all this joy. Why come I'm not experiencing joy? And that just makes it worse. Stop comparing your holidays to abstract movies like you see on the Hallmark specials. And normal Rock, Norman Rockwell scenarios. If holiday routines make you dread the holidays, try something different. Why don't you try the Feast of Tabernacles in October? Why not try Passover in the spring? Just don't do it. I just quit doing Christmas altogether. If holiday routines make you dread the holidays, do something different. Uh, spend Thanksgiving at a restaurant. Go to the movies. Uh, donate money to a charity instead of buying mindless gifts. Boy, that's an interesting expression. Traditions are awesome, but if they run you ragged trying to keep up with them, stop, he says. Although you may feel stressed and overworked. 
Stop being depressed about people who are no longer with you at the holidays. And that's another thing. Holidays, Christmas brings up, well, we lost Uncle so-and-so. Isn't it a shame? This is our first Christmas without him. They start crying and boo-hooing and carrying on. It's not a time of joy. It's a time of depression. Relatives who are as depressed as you, he says, just ignore them. <laughs> just ignore them. This cemetery in town of Grove, every year at Christmas, because they did it when my daddy died, and they did it when my brother died, and they did it when my <coughs> granddaughter died. They're What's all that? buried in that cemetery. Yeah. They have a service in the chapel at the cemetery at Christmas, and they invite everybody whose relatives passed away during that year, yeah. and you go there, and you sit there and boo-hoo and cry and put ornaments on the Christmas tree. Yeah. And grieve. And grieve. Yeah, it's not a time of joy. It's a time of grieving. And, they, and I've been to three of them. Only because my mama went. Yeah. I didn't want her going by herself. I don't blame you. <clears throat> you did the right thing. The Bible says let the dead bury the dead. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> the spiritually dead will have it. To honor, but it also says to honor your mother and your father, and I'm not leaving my mama there by herself. That's not what he meant, though. <laughs> that's not what he meant. The spiritually dead, they're very their dead. All right, leave parties and gatherings when you want. Go to bed early. Always have a plan of escape. When you go to these Christmas parties, in fact, I don't go. But, you know, if you do go, don't feel like you are obligated. Just thinking about the holidays can be stressful and depressing. Now, this is from a secular source. Just thinking about them can be stressful. Forget the perfect gift. The crowds and the horrors of mall shopping can be left behind if you just use the net, use the Internet, if you have to buy something. Don't carry a credit card with you because you'll overdo your limit. Don't stay up all night shopping and wrapping presents. Holiday parties equal heavy drinking. We were, it was just, it was right at Christmas one year, and I was working at a factory down here in Harrisburg, and uh, we were all walking out, you know, the buzzer had sounded, we were all walking to our cars, and the guys behind me said, hey, Joe, let's, let's get drunk. It's Christmas. Let's get together tonight and get drunk. And I looked at them and I thought, isn't that amazing? That's how they're celebrating, supposedly, the birth of Christ. Let's get drunk. Uh, do give yourself a break every single day. As the days get shorter, the sky lowers. You may experience seasonal affective disorder or sad. Just sitting under a sun lamp might help you. Um, take a few minutes to meditate or take a hot bubble bath at night or sitting in front of the fire with a cup of cocoa. Now, I can do that. The holidays can be uh, love and family. Can be exhausting, but they don't need to be depressing. Keep to your schedule, take care of yourself, give your love and family a hug, and remember the holidays will soon pass. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? People are also looking forward to it until it gets here. Right? Yeah. Yeah. The holidays will soon pass. It'll all be over soon. We can get through it. We can make it through another day, another another Christmas. It's a horrible time. Well, there were people fighting in malls yesterday, getting buying Christmas presents. Yeah, fighting at each other in the malls. Mm. The good thing about this time of year is that some businesses give their employees bonuses. That's a good thing. Yeah, if they give their if they give their people bonuses, but yet for all the companies that give their their people bonuses, there also there's a lot of layoffs. You ever notice they usually lay people off just before Christmas? I don't know why they do that. A lot of people end up not even having a job at this time of the year. People take their bonuses and go buy Christmas presents. They don't even know they got them. One final thing here: it says talk to your doctor if you're feeling sad. <laughs> So now you, Christmas might make you have to pay a, do, a visit to your doctor. They can refer you to a mental health specialist. If Christmas is really getting to you, you might need to go to a mental health specialist. How many of y'all are planning on going to a mental health specialist because we're celebrating Christmas this year? You, okay. <laughs> if your feelings of sadness during the holidays are accompanied by suicidal thoughts, see why they put this on the internet to help people get through the trauma of a pagan holiday that the Catholics and the Protestants have bestowed upon us. And it's not biblical. It says call 911. Contact the National Suicide Prevention uh, Hotline at, you want the number just in case? 1-800-273-TALK. Okay. All right, well, Christ's birth has nothing to do with any of this. What about the peace and joy? Does the Bible have anything to say about peace and joy? Yeah, it does. But you don't get it from a pagan holiday. You just don't. In the book of Galatians, Galatians 5.22, it talks about the fruit of the Spirit is love. We want that. That's what Christmas is supposed to be about. 
joy and peace. Yes, sir. How do you tell when someone has joy and peace? I don't know how you tell well, I know, if I somebody. I've heard somebody say it, it makes sense. They're pretty much smiling all mm -hmm. the time. <clears throat> yeah. The question for our internet audience, how do you know when somebody has joy and peace? They're smiling and all the when time. When you go in the yeah. mall or you go in the grocery peaceful. store, when you go into any store this time of year, how many people are you just saying, see that just got this big smile on their face? <clears throat> Most of them don't have a smile no, on their face in the stores. They're mad because they can't get in the line first. They're mad because yeah. of this or mad because they're of that. They're stressed out. <laughs> yeah. You know what we ought to do as a group? We ought to just go down to the mall after church today and just sit around and just watch the faces of people <laughs> and when they get all stressed out say hey we don't celebrate it and, you know but it's a sad thing when we have good students who are making good grades and they love God's own but they have to drop out of college learning about the book the, the book here the real book in order to celebrate a holiday that the Bible says we should not be celebrating That's happened more than one time yeah Learn not the way of the heathen, Jeremiah 10, verses 1 through 3 tells us. For the customs of the people are vain. Don't do that. Now, <clears throat> I'm just going to turn to Galatians <clears throat> chapter 5. Chapter 5 and verse 22 makes this statement. The fruit of the Spirit, not the fruit, the produce of a holiday, which is tinsel joy, but the fruit of the Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace, the very things that Christmas is supposed to bring. Long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Temperance, self-control. People don't have much self-control at Christmas time. They, ex they spend more than they should. They drink more than they should. They eat more than they should. Where where's the temperance? You don't get it from a holiday. You get it from the Holy Spirit. Temperance means self-control. So that's true joy, and true peace comes from the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> I looked up this word peace. <clears throat> it is mentioned in the Bible 430 times. Isn't that interesting? God wants us to have peace. Jesus himself mentioned it 26 times. Jesus alone mentioned it 26 times. In John 16 and verse 33, here's what we read. Words of Jesus. These things I've spoken to you. That's why we need to be studying the New Testament, not taking our money that we should be staying in college with and going out and buying all these gifts on because that's not going to give you peace. These things I've spoken to you, that in me you might have peace, not in a pagan holiday. In me you might have peace. In the world, watch just what the world is doing here celebrating Christmas, you're going to have tribulation. And like you said, they got tribulation written on their faces. But be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. So if he overcame the world, you don't have to celebrate these pagan holidays. And the Bible tells us not to. In Jude 24, that's the last book of the, Old, of the New Testament next to Revelation, the very last one. It says this, Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling, talking about God, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. You don't get that from a holiday. It comes from the presence of God. In his presence is joy forevermore, the Bible says. <clears throat> That's verse 24. Now I'm going back to John. I'm flipping back and forth here. In John uh, 15 and verse 10, it says, If you keep my commandments, you'll abide in my love. Even as I've kept my Father's commandments, I abide in his love. These things have I spoken to you, verse 11, that you might have joy. You don't get joy from Christmas. You, the things that I've spoken to you, I've, I've given these words that you might have joy <clears throat> and that your joy might remain and your joy might be full. I want your joy to stay with you, and I want it to be full. That's first. Uh, that's John chapter 15, verse 11. I've spoken to you that, that my joy might remain in you, that your joy might be full. I want to have his joy in me. And he said this on the night before he died. In Romans chapter 14, <clears throat> you know, Jesus came preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And in Romans 14, <clears throat> verse 17, we read, this is the only place where the term kingdom of God ever appears in the entire book of Romans. For the kingdom of God is not one thing, but it is something else. He says it is not meat and drink, 
Now, what do we have at Christmas time? Well, holidays, meat and drink. All right, he said, but the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. What is the kingdom? The kingdom of God is righteousness and peace and joy, not in Christmas, but in the Holy Spirit. It's peace and joy, the very things that we all want. Where do we find it? In the kingdom of God. And Colossians 1.13 says, we've been translated into his kingdom. <clears throat> Chapter 15. In verse 13, now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace, which is, that's at, at Christmas time, what do you have? Joy and peace, right? I was in somebody's house just a few days ago, and right there at the mantelpiece, right over the mantelpiece, these words, joy and peace. That's what holidays are supposed to be about. <clears throat> right on the mantelpiece it said that. Now, but, but the Bible says, the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. How? In believing. That's how you get it. In believing in Jesus, that you may abound in hope, and so on. That's how you get it. So joy and peace comes from believing in Jesus Christ and obeying his word, not from keeping holidays that, that, that was originated in Baal worship, which internet's full of stuff like that. Newspapers tell you about that. You know, fruit comes only from a tree, right? Fruit comes from some kind of a plant. Mm -hmm. Joy is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. I cannot get an apple except it came from a tree. The only way you can get an apple, it, it, you got to get it from a tree. Now, you get it at the grocery store, but they got it from a tree. It comes from a tree. The only way to get this kind of joy is from the Holy Spirit. Joy and peace, those are fruits of the Spirit. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you'll never have that and the first thing he mentions is love but the word is not eros romantic love the word is agape divine love the happiest couple the happiest married couple who are not christians can never have that kind of love agape divine love because it only comes as a fruit of the spirit of god now they can have romantic love two atheists can have romantic love they can have phileo love another greek word that means friendship they can you know, atheists can be good friends. But you cannot have agape love except through the Holy Spirit. You cannot have this kind of peace except through the Holy Spirit. You cannot have this kind of joy except through the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> you go to an amusement park <clears throat> and you have thrills and you have some fun and you have some excitement. But real joy comes from the Holy Spirit. Now I want to go to Deuteronomy 12 i got just a few more scriptures to give you before you go home today. I want you to listen to some of this because you're hearing God's word today. Deuteronomy 12. <clears throat> We're supposed to live by every word of God. That's Luke 4 and verse 4. If you have an NIV, it doesn't say that. But it's in the original Greek and it's in the King James. That's why I use the King James. It's based on the original Greek. Deuteronomy chapter 12 and verse 1 says, These are the statutes and judgments which you shall observe to do in the land which God is giving you. These are, these are the statutes of God. Verse 4. Do not do so unto the Lord your God. I didn't read all four verses, but it talks about, in verse 2, the places where the pagans worship, their temples. Verse 3, their altars, their groves, their idols, their images. Hew down their graven images. Don't you do those things to the Lord your God. Don't do what they did to their gods, don't you do that to the Lord your God. You're not allowed to do that. <clears throat> Verse 28. Observe and hear all the words which I command you, that it may go well with you. Do what God commands us. And you and your children forever, that you, uh, when you do that which is good and right in the sight of the Lord. When the Lord your God shall cut off all the nations from before you, the heathen, where you go to possess them and you succeed them and dwell in their land. Take heed to yourself that you don't be snared by following them after that they be destroyed from before you. Don't you inquire after their gods saying, how did they serve their gods? I'll do likewise. Verse 31, don't you do likewise to the Lord your God. Don't you do to the Lord your God what they did to their gods. The December 25th was a holiday to honor 
the pagan sun god. Don't use that to honor Christ. It is a sin against God, and Christ will not accept that kind of worship. Verse 31, you're, you're not to do so to the Lord your God, for every abomination to the Lord which he hates have they done to their gods. Now, what have they done to their gods? They set aside the winter solstice to honor the sun god. Every abomination, everything they've done to their gods, that's an abomination to God, and we're not to do it. Okay, we have a question? It's, From more, the internet. Of a, it's more of a statement, and it wants okay. to be addressed. <clears throat> okay. In the kingdom of God, there are only seven feasts, and a citizen of his nation will only observe those in all caps. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, for those of you who were on the internet didn't hear that, uh, uh, the statement was is that in God's kingdom, there's only seven feasts, uh, Seven holy days, technically, and that a true Christian should observe those. I agree, hundred percent. But they said in all caps, only those. Mm -hmm. So we, so if you're looking at us now <clears throat> as being, well, it's not wrong to observe. Now, here's the thing: God's people observed Purim, and that wasn't one of God's seven holy days, but God never condemned it. Purim was invented by Mordecai, a Jew who invented it for the Jewish people. Nothing wrong with that. So like, say there's anything wrong with celebrating a birthday. Yeah. Or, or so, better, yeah, your is not pagan. Or Veterans Day or Memorial Day. <clears throat> yeah, Memorial Day. Day. What day? Labor Day. Labor Day, yeah. Those days are fine. Mm -hmm. They're not pagan. As long as they're not pagan, it's okay to do. Your own birthday is not pagan. Jehovah's Witness to say, oh, don't celebrate the birthday. Mother's Day is a day to obey the fifth commandment. Yeah, okay. yeah. Father's Day is a day to obey the fifth commandment. What's wrong with those? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely. So um, here he said in verse 31, don't do what they did because what they did is an abomination. Verse 32, what things soever I command you, observe to do it. Don't add thereto nor diminish from it. Now that doesn't mean that Mordecai was wrong to add the day of Purim. But again, it wasn't as a requirement. Like July 4th is fine, but it's not a requirement to be a Christian. Um, Mother's Day and Father's Day. You don't have to celebrate those days, but you do have to honor your parents. But the days that God gave us, we're required to obey. <clears throat> Deuteronomy uh, chapter 18. Excuse me for having a cold. I don't know how I got it. I haven't been out Christmas shopping, I promise. A lot of people get colds this time of year, so I'm in good company. Chapter 18 of Deuteronomy and verse 9. When you are coming to the land which the Lord your God gives you, you shall not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. And the book of Judges show that's the very thing they did. <coughs> they did that very thing. In fact, <coughs> before I go to Jeremiah now, I want to read you one more verse out of Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 2. You shall not add to the word which I command you, neither shall you diminish all from it, don't subtract, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. The only way to keep God's commandments is you don't add to his commandments and you don't subtract. Now, again, there are things we do that are voluntary, but if we say that uh, Christmas is a commanded, I think the Catholics call it days of obligation, poppycock, there's nothing obligated about it. Uh, Easter is a day of obligation, no it's not. Anytime you make it a, an obligation that we're required to do it to serve God, now you've added to his word. In fact, those days are pagan and are condemned anyway. For example, Memorial Day, Flag Day, President's Day, Mother's Day, Father's Day, we don't make them commandments that you have to do them to be saved or something like that. It's okay to do them, though, but do them if you want to. Now, in Jeremiah chapter 6, I'm almost through here. Let me get, go to Jeremiah here. In chapter 6, again, you know, who in the world thinks we should go to the Bible to find out what God thinks? Why don't we just go to the churches and see what they tell us God thinks, right? That's what most people do. What do the churches say? But let's find out what God himself says. Through the prophet Jeremiah, in chapter 6, and verse 19, Hear, O earth, behold, I'll bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but rejected it. Now that sounds like churchianity today. How many churches do you know? Can you name me one out there that says we're supposed to live by every word of God and all the commandments and all the statutes and all the judgments are still in force? I don't know of a one. 
I'm serious. I don't know a single church out there that says we're still supposed to live by all the laws of God. Not one. Verse 20, this is Jeremiah 6, verse 20. To what purpose comes there to me incense from Sheba and the sweet cane from a far country? Your burnt offerings are not acceptable, nor your sacrifice is sweet to me, God says. Why? Well, you're not doing what I told you to do. You're doing, you're, you're celebrating, you're honoring me. What did Jesus say? You honor me with your lips, but your heart's far from me. And that's what people are doing. You know, Madeline Murray O'Hare, the, the most famous woman atheist that's ever lived, and now she's dead. She kept Christmas. She put up a Christmas tree, and her son called her a hypocrite. He said, Mom, you're, you're a famous atheist. Why are you celebrating Christmas? And she would. She'd celebrate Christmas. But it's really not about Jesus anyway. Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 13. <clears throat> the Lord says, because they have forsaken my law, that sounds like Sunday Christianity today, because they have forsaken my law, which I set before them, and have not obeyed my voice, neither walked therein, but have walked after the imagination of their own heart. Jesus wasn't born in December. That's your imagination. He was born in autumn. And after Balaam, that's the sun god, which their fathers taught them. Therefore, verse 16, I will scatter them. God is going to scatter them. And he did. And he'll do the same to America if we don't repent. Look at chapter 10, verse 1. Hear the word of the Lord. Now, this is not Keith Slough's crazy doctrine. This isn't my word. This is the word of the Lord, which you don't hear preached much because it contradicts what people want to do. Learn not the way of the heathen. Verse 3, for the customs of the people are vain. One cuts a tree out of the forest. And the, the workmen, they, 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 the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe, they deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. John Hagee explained that that tree, I heard John Hagee say this, that they put a little platform to keep the tree from falling over. <laughs> he knew exactly what this was about. And then when he got through reading all this, he says, but I'm not telling you not to celebrate Christmas. If he did that, he might be thrown out of his church. They deck it with silver and gold. <clears throat> um, and I won't read all the last of the, all the rest of this, but <clears throat> don't do these things. Now, Jeremiah 16, verse 11. <clears throat> then you shall say to them, because your fathers have forsaken me, says the Lord, they've walked after other gods, they've served them, they've worshipped them, and have forsaken me and have not kept my law. Name me one Protestant church, just one, if you can. Anybody over the internet can do the same thing. Name me one church that says we're supposed to obey all of God's law. I don't know of a single one. I can't name you one. If you mention the fourth commandment, oh, that was all changed. If you mention the second commandment about having pictures of God, oh, well, that's okay. We do that now. It's like my mother told me years ago, well, Keith, you can't change all the churches. I said, I'm not trying to. I want to change me. I can't change anybody. I've learned that over the last 30 some years. Did you have a question? Dr. Smith, can you explain uh, Hosea 4 and 6 and relationship between the Jewish people and the Yeah, he says, because you've rejected knowledge. The question is for our internet listeners, uh, Hosea 4, 6. And that's where God said, because you've rejected my words, I'm going to reject you. Yeah, I'm going to reject you. And even your, you know, how's the exact wording? Do you have the exact wording there? Don't look it up. If you don't, I'll look it up. No, I have it. Okay, read it out loud to us. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt... Be no priest to me, seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. Yeah. yeah, you've rejected knowledge. Now, this is the knowledge of God here. Mm -hmm. This has been laid aside to hold the tradition of men. <laughs> And Jesus said that in Mark 7, verses 7 through 9. He says, you, you've laid aside the commandment of God to hold to your own tradition. So you've rejected knowledge. And therefore, because you rejected knowledge, he says, I'll reject you. So, so if we reject the word of God and his knowledge in order to hold to our own traditions, even our worship is vain. And worship, worshiping Christ at Christmas is a vain exercise. 
Did I answer your question? I don't know if I did or not. You were not supposed to have anything to do with these, these heathen customs. And we're rejecting what God's word tells us. We're supposed to worship him all year anyway. We're to worship him all year. <clears throat> Absolutely. Now, in this same chapter, talking about when Christ returns, let's look at verse 14 here. Therefore, behold, the days come. Now, this is in the future, says the Lord. This shall be no more said the Lord lives and brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. That's what they're saying now, because that's the only exodus they know about. There is a future exodus yet to come when Jesus returns. But the, this is what they'll be saying. The Lord lives that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north. Not just the Jews, but all those lost ten tribes that went up into Europe, north of Israel. And from all the lands where the, he had driven them. And I will bring them again into their land that I gave their fathers. So that's what's going to happen here after Christ returns. That people will say, God lives who brought us up uh, out of the north country. So this is a future exodus. Verse 17. My eyes are upon all their ways. They are not hid from my face, neither is their iniquity hid from my eyes. And, and first I will recompense their iniquity and their sin double, because they have defiled my land. Now listen to verse 19. This is Jeremiah 16, 19. O oh Lord, my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the day of affliction, the Gentiles shall come unto you when Jesus returns from the ends of the earth. You read about that in Zechariah 14. The Gentiles will come from the ends of the earth and shall say, this is what the Gentiles will say, surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and things wherein there is no profit. Not just the Christian nations, the pagan nations have inherited December 25th, they've inherited Easter. These, these are pagan holidays. I saw a documentary on television they were interviewing a man who was a member of the Church of Satan. He said, Halloween is, is our most solemn holy day on the satanic calendar. Well, now, why are Christians celebrating a day that's on the satanic calendar, because but it's not on the Bible calendar? Because they're pagans. They're pagans, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They have inherited lies. I, to, I, I, I grew up in a Baptist church. Bless your heart. All my life. <laughs> All my life, until I was old enough to rebel and not even want to go hear it. Yeah. Never did I ever hear one time anything as far as a feast goes or anything like that or a holy day. They just don't teach it. Except for Easter and Christmas. Yeah, and those came from Babylon. And Halloween. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and they have Halloween. We, we have, have trick-or-treat in our church when I was a kid. Fall festival. We had a haunted house in my church when I was a yeah. kid. What you had what? A haunted house in my church. Had a haunted house in their in their yeah. Yeah. They'll have that. They won't celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles in October, but they'll celebrate with their haunted houses. Jeremiah 17, verse 9. People say, Well, look, just follow your heart. And if your heart says it's okay to celebrate these holidays, just follow your heart. Here's what it says a few verses down in chapter 17, verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things. And desperately wicked. Who can know it? So when the New Agers and a lot of sincere people today say, oh, well, just follow your heart. My heart may not be right. The way you get your heart right is to get it on this word. That's how you get your heart right. You, you correct your heart and your mind by the word of God. If you haven't done that, don't follow your heart. What if, what if, what if the man's an atheist? Oh, just follow your heart. His, his heart's not going to guide him directly. Correctly. All right, now just two more scriptures and we'll conclude. And these are in the New Testament. All right, no, wait a minute, let me give you three more scriptures. <laughs> that's the problem. People are following their heart. People are following their heart. That's part of the problem. Emotions now, will get you in trouble in a heartbeat. What will? Emotions. Emotions will get you in trouble. Now, Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 24. Therefore, is the fire devours the stubble and the flame consumes the chaff so their roots shall be as rottenness and their blossoms shall go up as dust because they've cast away the law of the Lord of hosts. They've despised the Holy One of Israel. And then in the New Testament, 1 Peter. And there's no evidence of it coming back. Yeah. The church world is, they abandoned God's law a long time ago. Here's what we read in 1 Peter 
1 and verse 18. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things of silver and gold from your vain conduct, which is what conversation means, vain conduct, the King James says conversation, the Greek says conduct or behavior, your vain conduct received by tradition from your fathers. And my parents always observed. My grandparents always observed. While we have observed it for, for centuries, your vain conduct received by tradition from your fathers. And then the final passage I want to read to you is the one I've already mentioned, but I'm going to read it to you. These are the words of Jesus. And all professing Christians, and certainly all true Christians, everybody should pay attention to this. In Mark 7 and verse 6, Jesus said, Well has Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites. This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. For laying aside the commandment of God, you hold the tradition of men. Verse 9, Full well you reject the commandment of God for this reason, that you may keep your own tradition. I've got to, I've got to throw this down and not read it so I can keep Christmas, Easter, Halloween. I can't, I can't live by both of them, so... The Bible takes second place. Moses said, honor your father and your mother. Now, what's that? That's the law of God. But you say. That sounds like our church today. God said this, but you say. God said, don't learn the way of the heathen, but you say. God said, keep these holy days, but you say. You understand? But you say, if a man shall say it to his father and mother, etc., etc. Now, verse 13. In doing these things, you make the word of God, this book that I've been holding up, you make the word of God of none effect through your tradition. It's like we are spit on the Bible and we don't have any regard for it. We lay it aside and say, well, we're going to keep our tradition no matter what. And we'll worship God with our tradition. You can do that. But Jesus said, in vain do they worship me, teaching for their commandments the doctrines of men, the traditions of men. Any final questions or comments? I hope this was helpful. We have to repent. You and I have already repented, I hope. But so many of our students are going to have to drop out. It comes Every year we have people drop out. Every single year. And I think I'll bring this up at graduation, too. Because their kids tell their parents they're mean because they don't get them anything. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my, my father got mad at me. I was uh, 16 years old. He said, you mean you're not going to get your mother anything for Christmas? Oh, he was mad at me. I said, no, sir. I don't, I don't believe in that religion anymore. I am not going to celebrate Christmas. And here I am many, many, many years later, and I haven't started keeping it yet. I'm going to keep God's commandments as best I can. I'm going to keep his holy days and so on, but, but I'm not going to keep these holidays. Okay, one, one final. Is it a question or a comment? Comment. Okay. Your nation has created feasts to honor God instead of those honoring God. Yeah. Thanksgiving, 4th of July, etc., are traditions of men. <clears throat> Thanksgiving and 4th of July are perfectly acceptable if Purim is. And Purim is acceptable because God never condemned it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there are some people, like Jehovah's Witnesses, that think you should never celebrate. Uh, so they certainly wouldn't celebrate Flag Day because they don't, they, don't, they don't salute the flag. They don't celebrate Mother's Day and Father's Day. Their own birthdays. And they do anniversaries. Do they do I anniversaries? They do anniversaries, I think. It is perfectly okay. Listen, let me, let me conclude with this. It is perfectly okay to celebrate days that are not used in, or, were, or were used in pagan worship. It is perfectly okay to celebrate days. You can set aside next Tuesday. You yourself. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to go to work. I'm going to spend the whole day in fasting and prayer and dedicate that day to God. That's perfectly okay. You can, you can set aside... The Tuesday of every month, you know, till January if you wanted to. The Tuesday of every month. The Tuesday of every week. If you want to do that. Nothing wrong in that. Just don't take something that's pagan and use that to honor God. Because Jesus said that's wrong. You're laying aside my commandments which says don't do it in order to have your own traditions. Any other comments or questions? Not to mention that they're laying aside those to do that, but yeah. they're not following the ones that he does tell us to do. <laughs> yeah, what God says to do, we won't do. What yeah. God says don't do, that's what we do. Right. Jesus said, don't think I've come to destroy the law. And you go to church, yep, he did away with the law of the cross. That's where the sin stops. Every time you see where the Bible says don't think, look at what people think. Yeah. 
Think not I've come to bring peace at Christmas time. He came to bring peace. He said, no, don't think that. <laughs> Everything he said, don't think, but what people think. Okay, well, yes, ma'am. Uh, now, now, Jingle Bells is a winter song, but don't just sing, in, sing it in December. You can sing it any time. You know, riding in a one-horse open sleigh, there's not one word in there about Christmas. If you listen to the words, that's technically okay. Uh, there's one about the winter wonderland, and the preacher comes by, and he's going to do the wedding and so on. Those things about snow and, and, and you know, winter being, you know, pretty and all that, those things in, in themselves are not bad. But when you take the, because they're not religious, but when you sing Silent Night about the, the helpless little baby away in a manger, yes, he was a baby one time, but we should think of him now as a king, king of kings, lord of lords. And this thing, always seeing Jesus as either a helpless baby or a, or a dead Christ hanging on a cross like they show in the Catholic Church, we get it in our mind that he's either helpless or he's dead, and, and neither one of those are true. One more, then we've got to conclude. I have a question. What's your question? These people that say that we shouldn't celebrate birthdays and we shouldn't celebrate Fourth of July or, yeah. or Thanksgiving or anything, is that not them adding to the Word of God? Because that's their opinion and that's not what the Word of God says. Yeah. And we're not supposed to add to or take away. The main thing is that if they, if the Bible allows for days like the Feast of Dedication, which is not commanded, yet Jesus went to it. You see that in the book of John. And Jesus went to the Feast of Dedication, though that's not a biblically committed holiday or holy day. So it's okay to celebrate holidays as long as they do not contradict the Word of God. Okay, I know everybody needs to leave. Good to see everybody here. Glad you made it. What's the Feast of Dedication? Hanukkah. That's, that became Hanukkah. Yeah. All right, we're dismissed. God bless you all. We'll see you later.